So in this problem, we're told to find the magnetic field at the center of this rotating sphere. And at first, we're told to use example the result of example 5.6, which is about the magnetic field at a point above the center of this circular hoop with uh, current going around it. But instead of using this result, I'm actually going to use this formula instead. This is the formula for the magnetic field arising from a surface current. So we don't get a lot of practice with this uh, formula, so, I, so I'm going to use this formula instead for this problem. So I'm just going to completely disregard Griffiths. I'm not going to use this result. I'm going to use this formula instead. And I think using this formula is a bit more rigorous. It, let, uh, it tells you a bit more about how this formula works, so I just prefer showing you how to use this because it's a bit more enlightening. So let's copy out the formula to see what exactly we need. So we have the current density times eta, and <clears throat> if you've watched my videos before, you see, you'll know that I don't like using this weird R symbol, I like to use eta instead. So eta is the distance, the vector pointing from some point on the surface of the sphere all the way to the center. <clears throat> and so let's figure out what these components should be. So what should dA be? Well, obviously, we're going to use spherical coordinates, so it's going to be r squared sine theta d theta d phi. So don't forget our standard spherical coordinates variables. We have phi, we have theta, and this is, since this is a spherical shell, our r is a constant. It's a big r. And <clears throat> our eta, if you'll notice, is actually a negative r times the r vector. Because in this case, we're evaluating the magnetic field at the center of the sphere. So that's why our eta is going to be a vector pointing from the surface all the way to the center. And then we know a vector pointing from the center is equal to r times the r vector without the negative. So if we're going back from the surface to the center, we just need to attach a negative. So we could express everything in terms of Cartesian coordinates. Oops. So sine theta cosine phi i plus sine theta sine phi j plus cosine theta k. And now let's head to, let's try to find k. So we know that by definition, k is equal to the surface charge density times the velocity of the point charges that are moving. So what is v? So let's say we're evaluate, evaluating the, we're finding the surface current uh, density at this point. Well, velocity at this point is going to be equal to r times sine theta times the angular velocity, and it's going to move in the phi direction. And the phi direction in Cartesian coordinates is actually just negative sine phi i plus cosine phi j. So with a bit of vector calculus, you can actually prove this with a derivative, so I'm not going to prove this here. So there we have it, we found all three components. We have dA, we have eta, and we have k. So let's try to construct our integral. So it's going to be a double integral because it's a, it's a spherical shell. So we have k cross uh, eta. And in this case, I'm just going to change everything into something like this. So you see that I got rid of the eta hat and I substitute it in the definition. So this is a unit vector. So I'm just switching it out for this so that the cross product, I won't have to worry about the denominators. So let's try to evaluate this cross product. So we have k. So k is equal to a whole bunch of these constants. So we have our determinant. So negative sine phi cosine phi zero. And then for eta we have a negative r, so I'm gonna put the negative r outside. And then we have sine theta cosine phi, sine theta, sine phi, and then cosine theta. So let's try to evaluate this. So for the i component, we have 
cosine theta times cosine phi. For the j component, we have a, we have a negative, so it's going to be a negative times. So that's by definition of a determinant. So we have a negative times negative sine phi times cosine theta. And this one just evaluates to zero, so we have a plus sine phi cosine theta j. And then for k, we have negative sine phi sine theta sine phi squared minus sine theta cosine squared phi k and then obviously you can pull out the negative sine theta and you have a sine squared phi plus cosine squared phi which is equal to one so this whole thing just melts down to this and then when you do the integral I can tell you that both of these terms are actually going to be equal to zero and the reason is because we're going to have integral in terms of phi and then you see that there are no other phi terms here so when I multiply this whole thing, if I substitute this whole thing up here you'll see that I'm going to integrate a cosine phi and a sine phi from 0 to 2 pi because phi is going to go from 0 to 2 pi so when I integrate a cosine phi or a sine phi from 0 to 2 pi it's going to, going to be equal to 0 so I'm not going to consider these two terms so I'm just going to consider the k term and notice that this already tells us that the magnetic field is going to point upwards in the z direction. And if you use your right hand rule, you see that this is actually true. So let's move on to evaluate this integral. So, as I said before, I'm going to disregard all this. You have two negative signs here, that becomes a positive. So you have sigma r squared omega sine theta and actually you have two sine theta so it's not sine square theta and actually I'm not gonna evaluate I'm just gonna treat this I'm not gonna treat this as a vector I'll treat it as a scalar for now so I can get rid of the k for the time being I just I'm just kind of lazy I don't feel like writing it and then for da as we found before is actually equal to this and then theta you know it goes from 0 to pi phi goes from 0 to 2 pi and this actually draws out our spherical shell and then for the denominator we have eta to the power of 3 and then we know that eta for all points on the sphere is just pointing from the surface of the sphere to the center so eta always has a constant constant magnitude that's equal to the magnitude of the radius of the sphere so it's just r to the power of 3 so you see that with this lovely denominator this problem immediately becomes a lot simpler to integrate so there are no phi terms inside I'm just going to integrate the phi terms so we get 2 pi so we get a 0 to pi to make sure we've got all our constants we've left out the omega so we get sine to the power of 3 theta d theta so that's sine to the power of 3 theta so we can actually evaluate this using integration by substitution so I can express sine the square theta as 1 minus cosine square theta and then I'm going to let cosine square th uh, cosine theta equal to be equal to u so cosine 0 it's 1 cosine pi is negative 1 1 minus u squared and then differentiating both sides you see that du is equal to negative sine theta d theta so sine theta d theta is equal to negative du and this negative is going to we can flip the bounds and because this is a even even function so it's symmetrical we can actually simplify this a bit so we don't have to bother with substituting the negative one so we have one minus one third that's one third right No, we have 1 minus 1, that's 2 thirds. That's going to be 4 over 3. So we have 4 over 3 here. So this is going to be a 2. So we get 2 over 3 mu omega sigma r. So this is sort of our answer because we're not given sigma in this problem. So instead, we're actually given q in this problem. So we can actually use the definition 
of sigma. So you see that uh, sigma times the surface surface area is equal to q. That's why we know that sigma is equal to q divided by 4 pi r squared. So we can just directly substitute that to our answer. So it's 2 over 3 mu omega r times this expression. So now I'm considering it in vector results so at the k, the k back. So that's 2. So the r goes back down. So you get mu omega q divided by 6 pi r k. And this is our answer. This is the magnetic field at the center of the sphere.